Hello everybody, in case you didn't read the title, this video is dedicated to Jack Kelly because Jack Kelly gave me the idea for this video when he, Jack Kelly, gave me a term for something that I was describing and didn't know there was a term for and he joked that I should credit him in the video and this jo that joke has been taken too far and now his name is in the title three times. So Jack Kelly, you're welcome, you said I wouldn't do it and I did. Don't mess with me, I take jokes too far. So today's Take a Minute for Chronic Illness is about the two-factor theory of emotion. The two-factor theory of emotion is something I was very excited to learn about from Jack Kelly. Okay, let me start to be at the beginning. There is one major theory of emotion that says there are two key components that make up an emotion. A physical arousal and a cognitive label. So essentially your body puts out some sort of biological response and then your mind says, Yes, that response is happiness, or that response is sadness, that response is excitement. And it puts the label on that response and that forms the emotion because you've had the physical response and the observation of it and therefore, voila, you are feeling an emotion. The two-factor theory postulates that the physical arousal necessary to feel emotion is actually the same amongst a wide variety of emotions. So for example, the feeling of your heart beating quickly, that happens both when you are feeling attraction to somebody and when you are feeling fear. So the idea is that if you are saving a man who is dangling off a cliff, uh, those, that adrenaline rush and your heart racing in that situation could be mistaken for arousal or attraction to that person because your heart was racing and you accidentally identified that emotion as attraction as opposed to fear and adrenaline. So the reason this came up in my conversation with Jack Kelly was because I was talking about my issues with anxiety and chronic illness. Because I have POTS, I often find that my heart races quite a bit. And this my brain perceives as anxiety. So I will often feel anxiety and then wonder, am I actually afraid of something or is my heart racing and my brain rationalized it by saying I'm afraid of whatever I happen to be around. I have lots of very weird and quirky anxieties. I'm like, I'm terrified of balloons, not just like, oh, I hate balloon poppings. Like I have had panic attacks when somebody's walked into the room with a balloon. I also used to be afraid of elevators and I was afraid of a squeaking sound for some reason. A couple weeks ago, there was a squeaking sound happening in my room that my brain just latched onto and it kept giving me panic attacks. This is a theory that has been questioned as, a, as the name suggests, it is just a theory, but it is very interesting and it does directly apply to something that chronically ill people suffer from where they don't know if they're feeling something because of an emotion or feeling something as a symptom. I know lots of times I will have heart palpitations be triggered by TV shows. So I do think sometimes emotions can trigger physical symptoms and that's very unfortunate. That can make diagnosing things and keeping track of your body's well-being very, very difficult. So I wanted to put the name of the two-factor theory out there so people could go learn more about it and potentially understand themselves and the symptoms they're feeling a little bit better in the way it affects their emotions. So thank you, Jack Kelly, for introducing me to the two-factor theory and I hope, Jack Kelly, you enjoyed your video.